Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. We are here to talk about the challenge Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 3. I am one of your hosts, Alan Aguirre, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host. We got the Southern Luke Muncy. What's up, guys? And back after not being here last week is the lovely Canadian, Miss Nikki Sin. Hey, hey, hey. Did you guys miss me? I did. We I did. We did. We sped through that podcast. I mean, we were in a rush, but we also like sped through the podcast and we were just missing that third voice, that energy. It was just, it was just, you know, we missed you and I'm glad to have you back. I mean, that soft female voice to balance out our just two lame male voices, you know, it's going to be much better on the listener's ears. Uh, And it's good that we have distinct, you know, accents too. So you'll know who's talking. My ego needed that. <laughs> I was like, but you did miss me, right? Not oh, rehearsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We cried after we finished recording, actually, yes. I don't blame you. Now, back to Spies, Lies, and Allies. Uh, we had a very strong first two episodes. This third episode, I personally thought was a bit lacking, but Nikki and Luke, they really loved it. Yeah, I like. I was so into it. I was like hopping back and forth in my seat, like, this is really good. I liked it. Yeah, it had like, you know... Some sort of hookups. There was some drama that I had been waiting for. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, part of the reason I don't like it is because, like, the first two episodes, I rated them, like, high nines out of ten. And this, in comparison, is, like, you know, that's the difference between, like, when you get used to the challenge being, like, fantastic, that when something is, like, just regularly good, you're like, oh, this isn't as as good as last week. (laughs) It's because they weren't drinking. (laughs) That's true. I... I think the issue was there was not like a party scene. If there had been a party scene with a little bit of drama, that probably would have elevated it to Alan's caliber or close to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alan's. Uh, my bad. Uh, we're going to talk about the drama and house portion first to start the episode. And one of the issues I had with it is that it kind of took a lot of time to start up. Like it took about 10, 11, 12 minutes before we even got to the daily challenge. And when you have so many people, you kind of want to get the daily challenge out of the way fast. But in that time period, we did get Nelly's boot camp. And talk about a whole two, three minute segment where they play Anaconda. And right before it happens, they show uh, the dichotomy of house life, where some people are lounging out by the pool sunbathing and some people are working out like crazy. What do you guys think of this segment? I loved it. I love everything actually. So, but I really love this so much because a, like we even got the Nikki remix, like the challenge was like, okay, we're going to spend some money on this segment, but I love like putting Nelson front and center. Like he's in charge of all these workouts. But like Alan said, we also see the people that are like, ah, working out's not that big of a deal right now. I can, I can manage my social game. It was really fun to see. I, I also loved it. There was like one pan out scene when it was like, it showed everyone's butts. And my brother's like, oh, he's like, He's like, oh, finally a butt shot. And I was like, that was Emmy's butt. And he's like, oh, never mind, because he's can't stand her. And, like, Huey with the face mask on just, like, brought me right to Ashley with the gold face mask on, like, a few seasons ago. And I was like, they're meant to be partners. Skincare is important <laughs> to them both. I mean, like, at, given Nelson's actions last week, I'm not, like, super big on him right now. Just, like, tell tell the girls what's up. You know? Tell Bertha what's going on. Hey, for our entertainment, what he did last week, he's stirring the pot. He's being the star of the show, and he's making things happen. Uh, I will say, like, I always love those shots because they try to tell you, like, oh, these people aren't, like, real contenders. These are the people who are actually trying to win in some sort of way. But, like, Ashley, who's lounging out by the pool, can outrun everyone in a final. And Nelson, who's running the boot camp, hasn't won a daily challenge since Vendetta's, which was filmed in 2017. (laughs) I'd also just like to see who was shooting that because it's obviously some sort of like drone footage. It's like there was literally just someone going, yeah, just scroll over these asses. Well, I guess I'll get them <laughs> working out. Like <laughs> Here they go up the hill. Yeah. <laughs> it did do like a good, like whoever is working out is like always impresses you. Um, Emmanuel was putting in work. Tasha was putting in work. Esther. And when it's the rookies, especially, you know, those are the ones that are really here to game. Uh, and of course, this was also to boost up the relationship between Berna and Nelson, where Berna is working out really hard, and she talks about herself like being a threat, and then she also talks about 
how Nelson is like she's just she's just looking at him, impressed by his physique. Oh, Verna. Um, yeah, I don't like her, so I'll just be quiet a little bit. But I'm an Ashley stand. But I get what you're saying now. I'm like Nelson and Verna and Ashley provided that last week, which fully led into this right now. I do think that Burnett is going to be a huge competitor though. And like the fact that she is not laying out by the pool, even though she's probably a natural athlete speaks volumes about her as a competitor. Yeah. I always like to see the rookies like putting in the physical work and especially because they can see that the vets are, are coming for them. And like, this is one, Berna's probably genuinely interested in Nelson Two, What a great way to just sort of get in there. Like Gabo is just like, not worry because he thinks like Nani's going to be his shield the whole time, but he's not like in with her. This is smart. Not, this, is, yeah. this is politicking on her part, and she's doing it quite well. Gabo is like on day eight of the house, wondering where the TV is to put on Jersey Shore to watch. <laughs> that, no, he that, thinks he's cool. on Jersey Shore. <laughs> he's like, where's she? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the the poor sweet popcorn muscled man. If if Gabo ever won an elimination, I would just love for him to yell, "We got a situation up in here." <laughs> Cabs are here. I was just like, <laughs> does he know what show he's on? I keep waiting for him to be like, "I have the like the immunity idol," and we're like, "Buddy, wrong show." And he's like, "Oh, never mind. I have the veto." And you're like, "Still wrong show." <laughs> I have the immunity idol, right? Yeah. Now. No. I crack up though. Like it's like. I love American TV, and it's like, well, this is not the party show. This you have to actually compete, Gabo. I'm sorry. I I know, but like he said, it was his dream last week, and I was like, you know what? Good on him. Big dreams come true. I was immediately like not in on him, but I've kind of given him a chance by seeing how much people loved how weird he was on episode one. But it's it's just the wells running dry for me immediately because he's clueless. Uh, People who aren't clueless and just are having fun extending their showmance is we see Michelle and Emmanuel actually have a scene together and they have a cuddle and a snuggle and they seem like a really good combination. I am here for it. Michelle knows how to play men. It's so fun to watch. And I think she genuinely likes him and he genuinely likes her. And to see his confessional, he's like, we cuddle. And like Alan said, sometimes we snuggle. That's where you like do a little bit more. I'm like, oh, this is sweet. And I liked how she called him an uncut gem and how she could polish him and make him better. It was sweet. I, in in his confessional, when he was talking about that, I was like, oh, okay. Whew. You know, Walmart Jordan's got me a little sprung here. Whew. Even with that haircut, kind of got me a little bit. I, I really like the two of them together. I like uh, how the editor sort of built it up where they're like, you know, we have like our eyes on each other. I was I was waiting for them to hook up. I was like, hey, let's let's get a move on here. Again. Yeah, they gave us that. They they gave us the instant satisfaction with some showmances, but having that will they won't they? It's always great when you actually want to see it happen. It's the opposite of Fessy and Gabby, where we didn't want to see it happen. It was just boring, and then this is just I want more of them. I want more scenes of them. Even their cu- like cuddle snuggle, I want more. <laughs> I agree. Show us. We want to see the intimate moments. I told, like, I was like, the survivors should stick together. I'll, I vouch for this. This is, this is what I meant. Yeah. Any other uh, house drama we had? I mean, we saw Nelson and Berna have more hookups slash kissing throughout the episode where, you know, they're laying in bed together. But was there really anything else that was like that big? I feel like it was more gameplay focused this episode. I agree. Yeah, I li- I like that Ashley got a couple digs in. You know, she was just like, oh, well, I guess they're a thing now. And I'm like, sorry, did I miss like a small chunk? Because I feel like I know editing's a thing and this is not play by play like what's happened. But it just seemed like last week she was like, go, no, go off with Bertha. Like, go off with your girlfriend and seemed like genuinely upset about it. And then just like this week, she's like, well, I guess they're together. Yeah, and it seemed like last week Nelson was definitely like, let me see which shot I want to go with. And this week he's like, oh, yeah, I'm in love. We're getting engaged next week. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of luck with, with the ladies anyhow. I just thought it was so funny to watch that argument last week, not to bring it back to last week's episode, but, like, he's standing there arguing with Ashley about Bertha, 
And then Amber B's right there as if I didn't see the two of them making out on Instagram Live. How yeah. long ago? Uh, right before they left for filming. Yeah. Yeah. Get around, boy. Corey can't, so you may as well. Man, Nelson, Nelson's just winning right now. I mean, I, I don't know how he got this main character status. He deserves it because he's just stirring the pot. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's move into the daily challenge portion. Talking about the daily challenge now, and players had to do a somewhat convoluted swim. Uh, not convoluted, but it was a long swim with a jet ski in between. Uh, they had to jump off a cliff, dive under the water, grab a capsule, then swim through a cave to another capsule, swim back through that cave, go to the jet ski, take the jet ski to another location, and then swim to the finish line and put the capsules in a like uh, a container. Uh, the bombs they, yeah the yeah the bombs yeah um <laughs> first of all i'm so glad they didn't go off i'm so glad they deactivated those real life bombs but i will say you know <laughs> everyone's okay it was interesting enough to watch like the initial part of it but like there could have been so many discrepancies with the jet skis like is one faster than the other does one take a longer route a shorter route and they ran it in heats which i know they have to do but i know we'll talk about like who wins it later but they could have rigged this for anybody who won their heat. I did not like that part. As you saw as well, the waves were really affecting the challenge and depending on what time the tide was coming in and was just like, you know, some players had waves that literally knocked their pants off. We're going to talk about that later, but that's the difference between like who went earlier in the day and who went later in the day. And last week we had something similar in the car challenge where the players who went in the middle of the day had the sun beating down on them and they couldn't see a thing. So, I don't like daily challenges like this where it's all these teams in the beginning because there are big discrepancies like that and it just takes a long time to get through. Yeah, also you just like weren't ever going to catch me doing that challenge. I have seen the descent. I know what happens in caves. You're you're not going to catch me doing that. Not a strong swimmer. Don't don't like caves. Can't dive. Um can't do much it seems. <laughs> Definitely not that. I was Huey that whole time except for when he got in the water. Like can we talk about the MVP of that that daily being Huey? That, I, I, I don't know about that, but he's definitely the most entertaining character of that challenge. They went first, correct me if I'm wrong, yes? Yeah, Huey yeah. and Ashley and Anissa and Logan. It was pure, absolute comedy to see yeah. Huey freaking out, as I would as well, to see Ashley consoling him. To have Logan and Issa's confessional where in the background you can hear and see Huey vomiting, screaming, I can't do it, Ashley, I can't do it. Oh, oh, now you're trying accents. No, no. Okay, well. Almost as bad as mine. I thought that was good. I'm giving you that. I thought that was a decent Huey. Look. Thank you. You, you know what? I practiced it a little bit before this podcast. I mean, yeah. honest. Hater. Anyways. <laughs> no, I, like, I loved it. And Irish woman. <laughs> Sorry. You know. The vomit. Followed by the, the kiss. kiss. Ashley just... has moved on from Nelson. She's like, you can have Bertha. I got my BBL. Oh, God. She was smacking it. She was saying, get that big ass down here. Yeah. <laughs> the fake I, we one. Were, yeah, we were talking a little bit before recording this to fill you in a little bit. I don't think that Ashley saw Huey vomit six times, although I'm not sure how she would have missed that. But damn, made me feel sick. But, like, I get it. It was all bile, too. Just letting you guys know. Ashley's a party girl, too. So, like, she's definitely had some throw-ups and then some hookups right after. It's not something she's, like, unused to. Something she was unused to, though, was that it was her consoling a partner. And that that never happens. It's usually someone else talking her off a cliff. Meanwhile, she's trying to talk Huey to jump off of one. They're comedy gold together. Beautiful. She's very versatile. She's a great partner. I'll say that now. She's just like, this is kid stuff. It's fine. And I was like, what did you do as a kid, man? <laughs> I did love that when TJ finally blew the horn, like, Huey went after it. And who did he outswim? Everyone. Every body. Yeah. Everyone. I-, I loved how he was like, 
I won't do my accent. Almost did. I love how he was like, "No, no, do it, do it." I'm sorry. No, I can't. I'm too. I'm. I'm nervous. Uh, I loved how he was like, "Once you feel like you're about to die, you literally become a superhero." And I'm like, "Well, I don't know any superheroes at the BBL, or receding Caroline, but or lip fillers for that matter, or fake eye contacts." But he definitely performed. He he just started going. His accent's I, real. Does that count? I'm not. I'm not here for this Huey slander right now. Yeah. Like, that man was going through the water like crazy. And even Logan, who's like, I'm a really good swimmer. This guy is just like, he's just beating me. What the hell's going on? Like this guy who has the face mask by the pool while I'm training is kicking my butt. Oh no, he was impressive, but just comparing himself to a superhero. I don't know about that. <laughs> Are you sipping sweet tea and so tea? Yeah, maybe. Both teams end up doing pretty well in the challenge. And I honestly, as they were holding on to the jet ski, I kept waiting for a team the entire challenge just to like accidentally release and then be in no man's land. Luckily, that didn't happen, but I was just waiting for it the entire episode. Yeah, I wanted somebody to just like yeet off of there. Like watching the Olympics where you're like waiting for the figure skater to fall. You're like, come on, come on. I'm, I'm not alone in that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gruesome. I mean, I've never wanted to watch someone uh, spend all these years on their dream and then just be dashed into. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> I could think. Of, I could think of somebody that was going to go to the Olympics whose dreams I wanted crushed. They were never going to the Olympics. They are a clown, and we are not talking about a circus unless <laughs> Berna is involved. Uh, Michelle and Ed went up against Tori. Michelle and uh, Corey Lay went up against Tori and Ed. And Michelle and Corey Lay know if they do not win this daily challenge, then it's over for them. They're going into elimination most likely as they're a double rookie pair, or at least one of them is going in. Uh, they hit the water, and Michelle's face is immediately bloodied. Uh, Corey sees it, and he's like, I'm not going to tell her because I don't think she knows. Uh, and it leads to, I think, one of the best visuals of the episode of Michelle not only continuing to swim, but swimming fast behind Ed, who looks like he's going at a fast rate. And at one point in the cave, it looks like she's a zombie chasing after him. It is vicious. It is cool as hell. And I never saw this Michelle Fitzgerald on Survivor. I love her on Survivor, but I've never seen this person. And she was badass in this challenge. Badass is 100% the word. It wasn't even the edit. She literally just was a badass. Before they even blew the horn she looked over the edge and was just shaking her head like okay i've got to do it anyways i'm not even gonna psych myself out she knew what she had to do i love too that Corey lay did not tell her other partners would have told her and it would have freaked her out but she was killing it and alan's right on survivor you never see that she's kind of downplayed and you know some people don't credit yeah. her for her win which she does deserve but dang even tori in her confessional was like it is so clear to me that michelle is a huge threat to all of our games yeah she was like such a badass in the, in that entire challenge if of course if i was going up against her i would have been like honey you got blood on your nose um i would have i would have done that just to tank her game not because i don't like her but because i won a million dollars um i it the shot where she's like bleeding and still swimming very much reminded me of i'm, I'm so sorry luke of amber b when she has all that blood on her face um in in last season's final it was just like so, oh, it was like so cinematic. And editors are probably like, this is gold. Thank you so much. It's, I mean, I love, like, she just keeps adding dimensions to herself that I never expected. And it just, she's such a good reality TV personality and competitor. Sadly, they come up just a second short or two to Ed and Tori, who, I mean, like, Throughout all this, it's important to note that, like, Ed and Tori killed this challenge. Like, they did. Yeah, they really did. You can't even, like, hate on Tori. Love Ed, so I can't do that. But, like, they really did. And it, it helps my heart, too, to know that they're in the same heat because that totally eliminates any chance in my head that there was any type of rigging, at least against McCabe and Corey. Because Tori and Ed Michelle. won that heat fair and square. Or Michelle. No, Tori and Ed won fair and show. Fair and square. Agent Ed. Call Agent him by Ed. his name. There's Agent Ed, Mr. TJ, yeah, yeah, Scubanelli. Exactly. <laughs> love me, love me all these nicknames. Uh, then we had Tasha and Jeremiah, who DQ in this daily challenge, and 
they know right then and there, it's like, oh, man. Because, like, they were socially in a better position than Michelle and Corey. But because of their DQ and being a double rookie pair, they're going into elimination. They're going to be the household because of that reason alone. She almost killed Jeremiah. <laughs> God love her. I mean, I, you know, I couldn't jump from a 30-foot cliff. I know I couldn't. I can swim at least, but, like, the fear that she was going through, I'm sure is immense, but he's like, Tasha, get off of me. I'm going to drown. So I'm glad she swam to the edge and was just like, you know what? I know my limits. I know my boundaries. Somebody come get me. It, she did almost kill Jeremiah. It was a little, probably one of my worst nightmares is like me trying to do something in the water and somebody like pulling me down. Can't, no, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And TJ oh didn't gosh. even really give them any like, any hassle about it you know usually it's like oh we hate quitters but he was probably looking at the water like no that's it's fine (laughs) someone that tj did stare down though was kyle and that's because when kyle and amanda went um, amanda was laughing beforehand like dude you've been on all these seasons come on let's go and she jumps in actually smashes her face on the water like michelle and gets a bloody nose not wasn't really shown that much but she had some blood on her face uh kyle eventually like he doesn't jump and tj is just staring at him like what are you gonna do and eventually kyle does jump and they complete the challenge together and amanda's just laughing like come on dude you keep calling me satan but then you keep doing this stuff what's going on here and it's funny because they both know they're in good places like there's probably no threat to their game but i also do hate the situations where they are in a heat by themselves because they don't have someone to pace off of so not that I think they would have been real contenders to win this. I don't look at either of them and think, oh, they're a great swimmer. It's really truly a toss-up for us viewers. Like, how well are they doing? Are they in the are they in the running? I don't know. I guess with Kyle yeah. not jumping, it didn't matter. It's sort of for me, uh, the editing gave it away when it was like they showed like two heats and I was like, Oh, okay, like somebody from one of these heats is gonna win. They're not just gonna like blast through all of these. And I'm like, they only showed Amanda and, and Kyle because, one, it was funny that she had that commentary where she's like, you know, I have a kid at home. I didn't think I'd have a kid here. And because it was funny, I wish they played, like, like sad tuba music or something. You know, just made it, like, like very funny. Maybe play Circus by Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, you know? I, w- I would have loved that, but uh, <laughs> there was there was one other pair that, uh, of heats we have to acknowledge, and that is the CT and Berna matchup against Big T and Tommy, where the currents were strong. The currents were undeniably strong because CT's pants were shot right off. Uh, you know, his butt was all apparent for everyone to see, and then Tommy, when he comes out of the water to, like, finish his uh swim does nothing on there the whole tommy is exposed down you know down south and i don't think his fourth grade students are gonna be watching this episode because of that well and i have to also think did it come off in the currents or did it come off when they were on the board behind the jet ski like taking them through the water like they just shot off but yeah it definitely was not intentional for tommy's little timmy to make a little peekaboo Oh, I just want to know, like, who really deserves the name Big T then? Ooh. Because somebody, like, right after they got back, I can't remember who said it, but they were like, oh, that's not fair. He swam, he was swimming with three legs. Yeah, I heard that as well. I got to say, for all we've hyped up Berna, though, she kind of sucked in this swim, at least. Uh, She was, like, trailing behind everyone else, like, a pretty fair amount. Uh, Tommy and Big T finished before them, which is, like, very important to note because Tommy ended up with a concussion from this challenge from the fall. Yeah, I felt really bad for him while he was there and he didn't know what was going on. And when he was like, wait, can I get pants? It's like he realized, like, oh, I just exposed myself to all these people and these cameras. And this is a little humiliating and I'm not right in the head and I don't know what's going on. It was it was sad for me. It was a very strange um, contrast between, uh, like, Big T comforting Tommy, where she's like, I'm here with you, stay with me. Like, she's like holding his hand compared to like, if Big T was performing poorly, like, like Berna was, then CT would have been like berating her like last season. But, but no, CT's just like, doo doo. Yeah. yeah, he was just twerking his naked cheeks. 
Yeah. Well, while Tom is getting medical service, I thought that was a uh, that was a little rude. I mean, it did it did it did uh, lighten the tension of the moment, but uh, CT put them cheeks away for like five minutes. Yeah, you got like you got at least another episode to keep them out. Not to spoil anything, but like, why are you listening to the podcast if you haven't seen the episodes? So. <laughs> yeah, he had those near divorce cheeks. You know, you almost got divorced. You were working him out, but he didn't. He had to show him off a little bit. I mean, good for yeah, him. Yeah, when when CT's uh, pants came off, I, I I honestly thought like, oh well, they ordered him like the dad bod shorts, but he's skinnier now, and that's why he came off. But then when Tommy's did too, I was like, oh, it just the currents and the jet ski, they're going crazy right now, uh, and. We move on. The winner of this daily challenge is Ed and Tori. They beat Michelle by a couple seconds. And Agent Ed is really winning over the casual fandom and a lot of the fans in general because he's got an elimination win, a daily challenge win, and just an just a good attitude that, you know, makes you smile. I like Ed. Cannot deny it. Call me a casual. I like Ed. Yeah, put me in that casual category. I... He just seems like a fun guy to be around. You know, he's... When the, yeah. I feel like Tori put it really well, where she was just like, yeah, he's just got this, like, positive attitude, and he hasn't been, like, just like not just, like, an old, worn-out vet like me. Her words, not mine. Uh, and he just, he seems to have this, like, sort of, like, Big T that has this, like, this this personality that, like, radiates through the screen, where you're like, Yeah. I am so in love with Ed that I'm like worried because I know it's I like in my heart whenever it happens like this with a challenger it always takes a dramatic turn 180 like one day we're all gonna turn on Ed he's gonna do something that breaks our heart and it's gonna be fascinating I mean I think I think for the casual fans he'll always be loved because he's just he just he he has this attitude that just inspires you but I don't know I don't I wonder how long he can keep it up because right now he's killing it I'm mad because somebody on Twitter said that he was, like, going to be the new Bananas. And I was like, don't put that on him. Yeah, and as much as I love Ed, he won't be the new Bananas. Sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> and that's me giving credits to Banana. Bananas. But yeah, good, good win for a strong pair. Uh, that's our daily challenge portion. We're going to talk about what Ed and Tori did in the gameplay slash politics portion coming up right now. Switching into the gameplay and politics portion, uh, it really in re like took over the entire episode. At the beginning, we kind of see the cluelessness of the rookies and that Gabo. You know, he tells Corey Lay, it's like, yeah, because I have Nani. I don't think I'm ever going to be going into elimination this game, which is like, dude, Nani's never going into elimination this game. You're going to be going in in a couple weeks. And it just shows, you know, the state of the game and like, why is a rookie revolution not happening? Because you're playing with Gabo. He has no idea where he is. And he's totally forgetting the aspect that people can still partners. Eventually, I'm sure, and I could be wrong, someone will still Nani for the sheer fact that she is a vet. If you're a, if you're a rookie guy that's left over and you're looking for a girl, like Nani's a, a great person to go after. She has numbers. And, and then he also made the, the point that he's like, if, if there's going to be, like if somebody I like is going to be voted for, I'm not going to vote for them. I'm like, oh, buddy, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, your buddy, the situation's not there, but there's the situation and then there's the problem, which is Cabo. Yes. He's which, like, problem. transitions us to, like, he's not the only problem, because after Agent Ed wins the daily challenge, he tells Tori, hey, you can do all the politics for us. I'm just here for a good time. And I'm like, oh, buddy. We like you so much, and we still do like you because you're a great person. But we want to see this game shaken up. We want to see a vet and a rookie thrown into elimination together. And, like, we want to see some chaos ensue. And Ed is just like, yeah, Tori, whatever you want, it's good. Yeah, and I feel like he thinks that's going to give him longevity in this game, which it might give him a few more weeks, like get on the good side of the vets. But when they get down to the vets and you and maybe two other people, you're definitely target number one. Why are they not chipping away at some of these vets? Makes that's, no sense to me. That's something I don't understand. And I also haven't seen any of the rookies like approach Ed to be like, here's like, here's what's going down. Like the vets are targeting us. They're coming after us. Like you, you have some sort of say in this. I, I hate it when, when rookies are just like, no, just like let the vet decide everything. I'll be fine. I'm like, so you don't want a million dollars. 
That's what I'm hearing. You don't want a million dollars. Just say it. Yeah, and uh, we transition to see what Tori is game planning, and she's talking with Devin, and I feel like Devin is controlling a lot of the, a lot of the power of the season because whenever you know the votes are like the pre-gaming happens, people go to Devin to ask like what he's thinking, and he says like, "All right, so Jeremiah and Tatcha are the house vote, obviously." From there, the strongest players are Emmanuel and Berna, which is really interesting to point out because Emmanuel has been under the radar killing it, whereas people just see Berna as a big threat. Yeah, and I feel like part of why she sees a big threat is because of who she's with, CT. Um, but there's also a reason that she's with CT. Like, he hid for her. Yeah, I number one draft pick, Devin, and Tori, I'd like to note. Both of them just yeah. picked two weeks in a row um it's interesting to see him like pull up this puppet master gig again you know he, he's doing well i just want yeah. him to put some shoes on when he does it I, his feet were out the whole time and it grossed me the hell out he has some gross feet i'm not i'm not i'm sorry i this is the weirdest thing to point out but it was apparent in all the scenes i just need him to put some shoes on that, that's what i want all feet are gross and when you got your Hobbit Fred Flintstone feet out, I don't want to see it. So I don't want to see it on my big screen. Hey, well, so if you were into that kind of stuff, Nikki, you never know. Okay, Somebody whatever you this. like, Luke. Hey, not me, but we, someone might watch this and be like, hey, they're attacking my foot fetish for Devin. Um, I'm here to tell you they're gross. It is weird to see Devin in that in that mastermind fate, like place. Not that he's not smart. But in seasons previous, like, he's definitely answering to, like, the West type. Or, like, he's in an alliance where he's like, what should we do? He is, as Ellen said, controlling the minds of people like Anissa and Tori, who might have a bigger foot in the game than he does. Not to do a play on words. Oh, my play on words was going to be, I hope somebody, like, screenshots it and, like, his foot. And it's just like, uh-oh, trouble's a foot. <laughs> Step in his game up. <laughs> In the past, it's always felt like Devin was like a low-level politician trying to shoot his way up the ladder. Like, hey guys, let's shoot big. Let me let me take someone down who I'm not even like in the same realm as. Whereas now he feels like like a, like a war general, like game planning. It's like, all right, the votes go here, the votes go here. We're taking out these rookies. We're gonna take out these people next. We're gonna take a shot at this person because it's a good calculated move. And he's really like showing his prowess for the game. He's almost like a consultant to everyone. And I want to say, too, like, Tori was not showing hers. She oh, said, I did the numbers, guys, believe it or not, and there's 14 vets and there's 14 rookies. Maybe we should take out Big T. And I'm like, you would only do that if the vet numbers were up, sweetie. They're even. They're even. Yeah, she should have said, I want revenge from last season. Uh, I, I will say, among the troubles of what, like, Tori – Tori should not have gone after Big T in any way because they need to keep that veteran advantage. And she ultimately didn't. But what she did say about Big T's game wasn't wrong because Big T is the veteran most likely to corral the rookies as numbers towards her game. And when Big T got called out for it, she was kind of like, she was kind of like on her toes because what they were saying was true. But why wouldn't they use that to their advantage? You have like an insider with the rookies. What if what if a rookie wins wins a daily and they're like, then you can find out which which vet they're thinking of putting up. I Use agree. Your heads. I feel I love Big T, so don't don't mince my words, anyone. But I feel like she's easily manipulated when maybe someone with power speaks to her. Like CT just had to tell her good job, and she thought she was a superstar, which we believe she is. But like it changed her entire mindset. All it would take is Tori to be like. Hey girl, I know last last season things were a little rocky, but like, give me some intel. Like, you you could be my number two, Sadanisa. Like, even if that's not true, like Nikki said, use that thing that she has to your advantage. Yeah, like you you could have an agent on the inside, a double agent. Hey. Uh, I I I'm against that idea because I think Big T is a little bit smarter than I think you're giving her credit for, and as well because most of these players are partnered with rookies. They already have that influence over the other rookies. Uh, only pairs like Jeremiah and Tatcha and Michelle and Corey do they not have that influence over. Uh, to which, like, I know those players were actually, like, getting on with veterans well, and it's just part of the sheepish element of these rookies anyway. So 
in a perfect world, if all the rookies were thinking in a like strategic way, then yeah, having that intel would matter. But these people just feel like sheep. Yeah, and I don't even think it's us calling Big T dumb as much as it is that Big T is in a place where she feels vulnerable almost because she knows the eyes are on her. So she would probably do whatever it takes to stay good with the Vet Alliance because they'll take her further. Yeah, I just, I wasn't calling her dumb. I just want her to use her, her social game is really good. So why not utilize that properly? It's tough because if she tries to like use it, then if she just puts a target on her, because the vets are playing a game of like, nobody is allowed in. We're just staying packed. We're just going to systematically annihilate them. And if you try to spice anything up, we're going after you. The truce is over, as Kyle said. Um, well, it, it's a it's a boring gameplay style, but it's what's happening. Well, it's unfortunate for Big T because, you know, as we saw before, um, Tommy was medically DQ'd because he had a concussion, leaving her, her like alone. And I think it was I think it was Devin that brought it up. I can't be I, I can't be too sure in the deliberation where he was like, well, it could be like a women's only elimination, meaning, you know, Big T, you could go in. Do you want to say anything? And I was like, oh, my anxiety could not handle that. <laughs> Don't call me out. Even she told Josh in that moment, like, I'm not going to say anything because then I'll get riled up and I don't want to target on me, which is what Emmy should have done like two weeks ago. Uh, and Big T had some savvy there. Um, as, a, as a whole, though, man, I just I feel bad for her because she really wants to play the game. And she's stuck in this veteran alliance where if she tries anything else, she's going to get targeted. She's been put between a rock and a hard place for the way that she just wants to attack everything with such liveliness. And it, it's frustrating to see. What could I agree. I think what could have really worked her benefit is if the rookies had band together week one and try to take out, you know, rookies versus veterans. Veterans, some go home. And once they had the numbers, Big T could have effortlessly jumped ship. But now she's in that weird place where... If I break the ties first, I have all these strong people that are going to say, oh, well, you're next then. You're disposable. You went against the group. So I do feel bad for it. It would be more interesting to see maybe intermingling. I also did wonder if the rules were going to allow them to just nominate Big T. Like they did Devin and Nicole Z last season when Nicole Z was taken out? Yeah. I was I was curious about that because it seems like they just play that same video every time of TJ explaining how deliberation works. And I would just would have been like, Mr. TJ, can we nominate just like one person? And the team that did get voted in was Tatcha and Jeremiah. Um, it's it was tough because like they even kind of welcomed it like, hey, we know we're going in. Uh, we're ready to compete. And then Devin even asked, like, who would you throw in? And if not us. And then she goes. For Michelle and Corey, which I, I don't, they, they threw them under the bus for no reason. Corey took offense to it, and then Michelle came back with a more, you know, respectful response to him. And my thing is, their rationale was, well, they're the other rookie rookie team. Well, that's true, but if you guys come back from the elimination, you're going to need as many rookies as possible to be on your side of the vote. Why not say, I want Josh and whoever you think the weakest female is, like. This is your time to literally say it. It was frustrating. I just would have been open about it. I would have been like, listen, I know we DQ'd and that's the reason that we're going in. Uh, we're ready to take on anyone. Send us, send us anyone. We're ready to take anyone on. There was no I mean, need that, that, like... is, that is what they said at first. And then Devin poked them. Was like, so who do you want? Who, who do you have not you? Michelle and Corey that. Lay were the, were the safe choice. But not to make this about Michelle, but she did handle that effortlessly. I yes. mean, the targets should have been on their backs. Let's be very clear. Like, they almost won the daily. They've won an elimination before together. And she just, like, took that target and said, not this week. It's not for us. I could, like, see where Corey was coming from in terms of his being, like, him being offended by it. Because he probably feels just like, he's just probably annoyed getting voted in all the time. But 1,000%. Not, not really how you should act. But of course, I wasn't there. I'm not Corey. He was just reacting. This, 
this game hasn't gone good for Corey. Uh, he got Rogue called out by Anissa for that first elimination, gets his partner stolen day two, and then randomly at the deliberation gets thrown under the bus by his own fellow double rookie team, which is, I mean, that has to be mind-numbingly dumb. Like, every every move is going wrong for him, and it's not his fault. Uh, he's talking to Gabo, and he's just like, oh, yeah, I'm never going in because I have Nani. He's just like, that has to be just the worst to deal with. Devin, back to him, manipulated this deliberation so well and that he like got info from big t to get her talking he got <laughs> he got tasha and jeremiah talking he got Corey and michelle talking and all while not having a target on him and is a viable candidate to get stolen for the 8,000th time i i don't even hate devin anymore i said this last <laughs> season i used to really despise him and he had no place on the show for me i don't love him i'm not going to go that far but like I enjoy what he does. Like he brings a different layer that other people will not bring to the show and he doesn't care about it. He's just like, this is me. This is what I do. I'm sure he'd hate to ever hear me say this. One, I don't hate him anymore. Two, I think he'd be a really good big brother player. (laughs) He is smart and he shows that off. I mean, he's shown that off every episode for really the past two seasons. I I think he'd be really good on it. He's really strategic. He's playing everyone like the puppets that they are to him because like Josh and Fessy are like, oh, we have this like this grand, like this grand plan. We've got this. And like Tori was like, oh, I'm just like, you know, throwing names around. I wonder who I should put up. And, you know, it seems like every week Devin, like, like Alan said, like he's just the mastermind behind it all. And to his credit, often people that play puppet master use dramatics and very severe situations. He uses strict rationale. And that is a huge skill. Like, he has such a point at the deliberations when he's like, okay, well, then if not you, who? And and the opposite of this is Tori, where she, like, has her little interaction with Big T and Casey. We got a Casey confessional. I think it was, like, the first one we've seen in, like, in, like, three years. I Like, she's like, Tori, you just gotta learn to shut up sometimes. And, you know, Casey's right. She knows better than anyone. Speak less. Actions mean matter, like, matter more. And, like, Casey's never targeted for that reason. Yeah, Big T was making kind of a nice point that, like, everybody in the house has someone. So just because she's making friends with the rookies does not mean that she's aligned with them. She can have friends. Tori literally was like, who knows what's going to happen? But when me and Anissa are together, Ashley and Amanda, Casey and Nani, it's like, uh, 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 Tori, please shut up. Like, she opened the floodgates for that to happen. In in the words, I'm going to quote Hamilton here talk less smile more <laughs> just, just shut up for a minute you know yes yeah. especially, especially when i think of, i was just gonna say especially when you're in the place of power just shut up yeah i think both came out of that looking worse because tori actually did have a good retort of like yeah you throw them in against each other to refer to big t's move on her last season as a rational it was a good comeback in my opinion but i think Big T mentioning all the pairs hurts her game in a way that, like, even if it's true, her saying it out loud only puts her on the outside of them. And when, you know, it becomes those three pairs, they're going to target her first as the outsider. And then whatever happens from there is chaos. I just wanted to note that nobody, like, wants to say that Nani and Casey are dating. She was like, and Nani and Casey spend a lot of time together. It cut, It felt like like when your parents talk about like who you're dating, like, well, you, your little friend, you guys spend quite, quite a amount of time together. Mm-hmm. It felt very like mom. Yeah. They didn't know if Casey was actually single or not. I don't know. If Casey. The, knew. <laughs> the ultimate downfall though, uh, for Tori is what she does after this deliberation and that she makes a handshake deal with Tatcha to throw in Michelle as her elimination opponent, which even in confessional right after, Tori says, I don't know what I'm doing, which is, to me, idiotic. Like, you don't give someone a handshake deal unless you're guaranteeing them, like, what what, what you agreed upon. And it's this type of stuff that we I mentioned last week. It gets Tori into trouble on social media over and over again. And I understand what she thought she was doing, making good ties with Tasha if she does make it back to the house. But if you're going to do that, you have to follow through with what you're promising. 
Yeah, like, don't shake on it when you're saying, like, I'll see what I can do. That's, but then you're not, she, like, made a not deal a deal. Like, yeah. all these are you the one people, just speak clearly. <laughs> Nelson, say that you're not into Ashley anymore and you're into Verna. Tori, just, like, say, I'm power, like, I'm power hungry right now. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Yeah, we mentioned it already, but we have to make it clear that Tommy concussed, took him out of the game. We didn't make that clear earlier. We kind of referenced it, but yeah, it was really sad for him because he is a lifelong fan of the show, and to have his journey cut short that fast, and he's already announced that he's not doing like reality TV or at least the challenge anymore. Uh, I was, we weren't the most excited for him, but to spend your whole life to wait to get on the challenge, and that's how it ends, gutting. Yeah, I would have much rather an elimination. He did say in his statement about not coming back, he's just building his life res or his life resume. I think that's really awesome. Um, not that I want a wasted spot for a rookie on this show, but it is something cool. Like he's one survivor. He's been on his dream show. He can go back to his life with his wife and his job, and he can separate those two things. But he has that on his life resume, and a lot of people would love for that to happen for them, and they don't have it. Yeah, I commend him for you know. It seemed like he wanted to stick it out. He's like, you know, if I had like broken my hand or my foot, like I could have just like worked with one arm or something. But also him saying that he's like one and done, like he's not going to do the show again. I get that because like, pe like what people don't realize is like, oh, you just have like a concussion, like just don't sleep. Like those can be very traumatic and they can have a lot of like long term repercussions for it. And so like, you know, poor guy. But also things are not going well for the survivor people. <laughs> Jeez. No. Michaela out. Michelle, like it looked like she almost broke her nose. Tommy just getting smacked in there. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's not looking great. And then they go to the arena and Ed and Tori are forced to nominate two people. They nominate to uh Berna. Because they see her as a threat and because they don't want to break up the veteran truce. Um, who is a survivor person, technically? That is, that is a survivor person, survivor turkey. Uh, and then they nominate Corey Lay because they see him as the strongest male in the house. And physically, he does stack up pretty well with Jeremiah. TJ reveals the twist, though, that only the women are going to be going into elimination to even the numbers, which makes sense because if we lost two people here, I don't know what would have happened with Big T. And I'm glad she wasn't disqualified. Yeah, I don't know whether it was bad editing or intentional editing, but there was never a word about Berna beforehand. I mean, there were her, there was her and her confessionals being like, I know I'm seen as a threat, but I don't recall Tori or Ed ever being like, Berna's bad, she's got to go. So that was a little shocking to me to see her go in. And then Corey, I know you have to separate game, but, you know, Tori's ally, Anissa, burned vote on him and he went in. And she also had a deep connection with him at the very beginning when they moved into the house. And for her to just so willingly say, like, you know, I see you as a black gay man and like, I'm so happy you're on the show trying to represent, but then throw him in for the second time and being like, fight for yourself. I don't know. I feel like Tori's going to get a lot of hate this week. She's just like, I love that you're on here representing. I can't wait to see you represent in every elimination every week. I think it's going to be so great for your character. Ooh. Like, the poor guy. I think that they did mention Berna, though, when Devin was talking to Tori. Yeah, he said that that should be their yeah. number one female target because I she's thought... the strongest one. And and she's also, like, a link to Nelson, and they want to break up Nelson potentially making a volatile move based on Berna. Uh, in the end, it becomes a one-on-one -on -one female elimination, and we're going to talk about the elimination right now. Switching into the elimination portion, and we get a matchup between Berna and Tatcha. They play a game that is similar to eliminations we've seen in the past. Uh, most notably, the first elimination from the Ruins. Uh, players had to grab poles and then put them uh, on a, you know, on beam on a ladder of sorts. Uh, and not all the poles are the same size, and they have to get the right poles in the right positions, and they have to get every single pole in position to climb up the ladder they've created and then ring a bell. The difficulty with this challenge is that the poles aren't the most stable structure around. Uh, on top of that, some of them, they don't look much different in size and thus like 
if you have one out of place and then you'll just swing out of nowhere. You could actually put them all in the right place, but if you don't have the right sense of balance and can't carry yourself the right way, you'll fall down. And boy, oh boy, this looked like a hard elimination for the two women. No, I agree. I don't know how I would uh, stack up doing it. My first thought, though, was could they have laid out the pegs or the rungs before what? going up? Because That's they could have totally thinking. put them from smallest to largest on the ground. And That's then went so about smart. doing that as That's opposed smart. to like doing it in the air. Like I, my first thought literally was lay them out. Same. Because uh, it's, it's similar to like a puzzle, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you lay out all the puzzle pieces first. They just, they went like gung-ho at it. And I, at first like Berna's like, oh, like I have my like circus training. Yada, yada. I'm like, I don't, like I know people that, that do circus. I don't, I don't know if that's like proper training for putting sticks on there. It did help. I will say there were certain positions where Berna was able to like stand on one pole, hold her position with another pole, and then like reach down and grab a grab grab one on the ground that I don't think Tasha would have been able to do. Like she was, she had good balance and sense of that. But I I I, I agree. Uh, it it wasn't that helpful, and the fact that you had to get every single pole mattered as well because. I was thinking like, well, how about the person who can just make the fastest tower and maybe you skip a few rungs and climb up? That would be really fascinating to watch because that would be like, you know, wrecking wall where people just like, if you just break the wall in the right pattern and get there as fast as you can, you get the win. But no, you need to be properly correct and then climb up. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little burnout on the acrobatic circus thing, too. I do think it helped, though. Yeah, I would have liked that as well, Alan, for them to just the fastest route possible. You have these resources, but you don't have to use all of them. The main goal is to ring that bell. I think they just didn't want another Laurel, like, suck it deal going on. <laughs> like somebody using one of the poles in the wrong place. But I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I oh. got to say, like... Th I, I want this. <laughs> I mean, I hate Ninja, let's be clear. But like oh, the, TV, yeah. the, the TV moment was just like pure bliss for me. <laughs> oh man, Laurel's face or celebration, that was a great moment. But yeah, I think like, honestly, like there are certain people, like, I, like if you had just put the poles already in position, all correct, and they just had to climb up, I don't think Josh could have done this elimination. He's too clumsy. He, he's, he's too, like, flat-footed. He would have just fell off the poles, like, immediately. And that's where I do think, like, Berna's circus training came in handy. And I think this was an elimination, you know, built for a woman who, you know, because those were tiny poles. Those were tiny poles. Like, you put a big person on there, they, those poles are just coming right off. Because even Berna was struggling. She was falling off. Tasha was falling off. And they're, they're petite girls. Yeah, I think it's important to note the fan section. A lot yeah. was going on there. It you sure know, was. In one ear, we had Nelly T. <laughs> I mean, he was cheering for his girl. He's made it pretty clear. Come on, Berna. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. He even made the joke beforehand. If you get thrown in, I'll sacrifice myself like I did for Corey. Like, this is true love. I'm Romeo, you're Juliet. And I want to say, Nelson, did you take ninth grade English? They don't end up in a happy place. Yeah, you're good. You will die, too. Yeah, that's how that works. Uh, I, I honestly feel very good knowing that we also read Romeo and Juliet in ninth grade English. And so it's the same everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Even um, I here, you have to read it in the U.S. in the ninth grade. <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean, the real help for Berna wasn't her man, Nelson. It was CT. He was coaching her through that entire experience. And I know we've talked about Berna being strong, but that was the real moment where I knew Berna was like, oh, she's really good because CT cares a lot about her staying in the game. And to your point about CT, she was not meant to there at the beginning, but CT really helped her focus. And I think hearing that from someone as well-respected as CT made her be like, you know what? I I've got to get the same focus that he has in everything that he does. I I think that CT watched last season and saw how he treated Big T. I was probably like, I'm not looking good for the fans. i got to be a lot more supportive of my partner. And if I'm going to keep it real, he probably realizes he has a really bomb-ass partner 
CT or Big T is great, but like physicality is not on par with Berna. I do want to just circle back um, to Nelson uh, and his confessional during the elimination. Um, I'm never, I'm going to have nightmares and I'm never going to, uh, you know, not be able to think about him saying, come back to daddy. Uh, I'll keep the bed warm for you. He's bringing the hands in and it, it didn't it, like it that hands in on him. It was, yeah, I put <laughs> in my photo album, I, I titled that sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> yeah. Was... That, Cause, uh, gave me the ick. Tell you that right now. And, you know, side note of, you know, Berna getting some some pipe. Uh, she got hit in the face. And all her confessionals, she had that cut on her nose. And I was like, oh, she, I'm like, she probably gets hurt during the swimming, like the daily challenge. And then I didn't see any of that. And I'm like, okay, so they're just not going to address her getting hurt, whatever. And then she gets, like, smacked in the face with one of the, the poles. I was like, oh, that and looks to, bad. Yes. And something to add to that. They did a cut scene to Amanda and Amber B where they are both shocked and Amanda, I love this woman to death, but she can be evil sometimes. I figured she would be like smiling and tapping her fingers together out of happiness, but she looked shocked, which means it had to have looked bad in person. Um, but yeah. on the same train of thought as Amanda, being the little devil she is, we talked about Nelson and even CT and their incessant cheering. Amanda's sidekick, Ashley, no shock who she was cheering for. Uh, anybody but Berna. So Tasha had her full support. She, she would have cheered for TJ. <laughs> she she could. She would have cheered for Hunter Barfield. <laughs> Man, oh, good God. Ashley was really into it. She, I've, I've never seen her that invested in elimination in a long time. And, like, she's been in a lot, so I've never seen... She cared more about that than her own elimination. Uh Tasha was going at it much slower, more methodical. She wasn't good, as good at the climbing portion as Berna, because Berna was just, like, willy-nilly. She was just, like, going crazy. And there was a big difference between, like, Tasha's falls, which were, like, a lot more graceful, whereas every time Berna falled, it looked like she was going to die. Yeah. The falls were dramatic. I loved it. <laughs> like, at first, they were literally falling and taking falls, and they were like, oh, wait, someone's going to grab us because we're on a rope. And they would just, like, sling back. But, yeah. Yeah, it's like rock climbing. Exactly. Belay on. Belay off. Roger in the end, teams. though, <laughs> in the end, though, uh, Berna finds her patience, and she climbs up her fully completed ladder. She rings the bell, and she has won an elimination. She is in tears. Back-to-back -back weeks, we got these tearful elimination wins. Uh, Tasha is you know she goes and gives Berna a hug you know very a lot of sportsmanship the crowd is going crazy for Tasha they're so happy uh, you know she just graced the world with her presence and she was happy like hey you all have a great time and then like 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 a cool I, I was about to curse but I don't want to get her video demonetized she just lays out Tori deal she's like yeah, you know you're fake nobody trusts her she's lame as hell and Tori doesn't know what's going on like what 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 what? I'm Tori Deal. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm not fake. Yeah, you were. We saw it on TV. You gave her a handshake deal for no reason, and you went against it. You didn't give her what she wanted, and yeah, Tachi called her out plain and simple. And this is the Tori just keeps running into these issues. I love that Tasha did that, and Tori literally could have just sat there and been quiet because Tori's still in the house. Tasha is going home, but Tori's like, "Girl, girl, girl, you. If you're not gonna let me finish, then don't speak. Then don't speak. Then don't speak." I'm like, this is quite literally the last time we're going to see her this season. She's got the floor to speak. Like, just shake your head and nod. You know you're in the wrong. Don't address it. Just let her say her piece. Let things die down. But Tori, this episode, definitely seemed like she was in the mindset where she had to prove herself. And she doesn't have to. She just needs to be quiet. Yeah. Miss Victoria, again, talk less, smile more. It's just, isn't, isn't that sort of what you wanted? Yeah, even even Ed was cracking up at how much she was getting torn up. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tasha, I really like it, too, because she made sure to make it clear. It's like, everyone here, you're awesome. You're cool. You, you, you person, get the hell out of here, fake. And you love to see it because it's like it's simultaneously sportsmanship and a good drag out the door. 
Yeah, just, and honestly, if Tori had been smart, she could have been like, I'm so sorry, Tasha. Like, I saw it was a huge threat, and I had to get you out. Like, that's giving a compliment, kind of covering up for your snake move, but she didn't. But yeah, Tasha, wonderful girl. Loved her interviewer. She was like, if I ever come back, which maybe I will, like, Tori, this is the end for you. Never, ever, ever, ever. Which, that's something we need after this season, which is already seeming like it's being dominated by vets. Her, her villain origin story. This is it. Mm-hmm. And I'm here for it. Like Hero origin what? story. I mean. It's true. But like, so what annoyed me is that when, when Tori nominates Berna, she's like, oh, like, you know, I wanted to get revenge, blah, blah, blah. She could have just thrown in there. She could have been like, and I know that we had a conversation, Tasha, but I got to do what's best for my game or something like that. This could have been avoided. Uh, honestly, I would have just been cool if she just said Berna and then didn't talk the rest of the episode. Just like, t- like Tori, who do you want? Berna. And then just moved on from there. Don't even like just if you're going to play that snakish game, just own it. Just like just just do it in like the least damageful way to yourself. Uh, it was just it was annoying to watch. And in the aftermath, Berna picks CT to be her partner still because it's CT. Why would you not want CT as a partner? Uh, Jeremiah gets partnered up with Big T, and that is a, you know, it's a fun pairing, and now we don't have any double rookie teams in the game besides Corey and Michelle, so we know that Corey and Michelle will most likely be the house vote next week. Macy's, unless they win. Yeah, unless they win, which, fingers crossed, knock on wood, because I like the both of them, and I'd hate to see them get voted in simply because of numbers. I hate it. Ugh. I do want to give an alternate world where if Berna and Corey go into this elimination against Tasha and Jeremiah, that's a strong pair. I'm hedging towards Berna and Corey winning that elimination. In that scenario, if Corey gets to steal any partner, uh, he could take Amanda. He could take Amanda, and that would mean Kyle is going to Berna in that scenario, or or Kyle and Kyle's going to Michelle in that scenario which would mean there would be no more rookie teams, no more double rookie teams in the house. And Tommy's DQ injury, goddamn, it really affected the numbers of this season in a it, in a way that's negative towards a team we really like in Corey and Michelle. Now I'm imagining Corey and Jeremiah doing the elimination, but just these like big buff guys like fumbling on these like, on these poles. And, like the these, women would probably be like, yeah, knees just knocking off every single one. Yeah. That would be really hard to do in Paris. Yeah, I don't think this was the elimination for the for the originally envisioned for Paris. Or maybe uh one person was I don't I don't even know what I'd say for this, but yeah, that there's an alternate world where there's a double elimination and it completely changes the game. Uh what did you guys think of the episode? I mean we, we've already said that we liked it a lot, but like what are your final thoughts? I really liked it. Um, it. It definitely wasn't as strong as episode one or two, um, but that's, I think, just because my hype was up for those. Throw in a party scene, and I think I'm sold just like the rest of them. Oh, yeah. that's The party scenes make them, because you want to see them, like, having some fun. Like, I know they did the whole boot camp thing, but that's, that's like, putting in work. You want to see them, like, having a bit of fun, so that way there's a contrast to the tension and the gameplay that occurs. I mean, I really liked this episode because I love watching people get called out. So watching Tasha just, like, call out Tori, I was so here for it. And Agent Ed standing there laughing. My girl Emmy got to be quiet this episode. <laughs> and that's, that's our episode for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Caffeine Confessionals. Drop us a like, comment, subscribe. Follow Luke on Twitter at Final Reckoning. Follow Nikki on Twitter at the Nikki Sin. Follow Caffeine Confessionals on Caffeine Confessionals Podcast on Instagram. Me on Twitter at the Alan Aguirre. And have a great day. Bye.